Welcome to the special show with Rakesh Junjunwala, the best known face of uh, Indian investments. Good morning, Rakesh. Thank you very much, uh, especially for joining us in what is one of those tense moments uh, for uh, global investors and Indian investors. Well, let me start with uh, the event that has just rocked global markets, the Fed saying that they may tighten earlier than they had earlier mentioned. Now, can we compare this at all to uh, Greenspan in 2004 saying that he will remove accommodation at a modest pace and then he unleashed a four-year run? Is this sounding at all like that? A promise that growth is round the corner? Well, I don't see any Fed tight tightening before 2023. And the tapering also, I mean, I read the original Fed statement and people are interpreting all sorts of things. But they clearly said that as long as their goals of full employment and, uh, you know, moderate monetary policy are not fulfilled, they're not going to do any tapering. They intend to continue it. So I don't think the markets are so much influenced by the fact or they've gone down because of the Fed statements. I think they've gone more on because of, there was some heat in the international markets and that heat needed to be corrected. And the Fed is, you know, clearly saying that inflation next year mm. is going to be just between 2 to 2.5%. Still, inflationary expectations are transitory. So I don't reach much into the Fed statement. And even I think if there are going to be Fed increases, they are not going to be very aggressive. And after the, ten, the, after the Fed statement, the 10-year has, you know, redu the rate has reduced from 1.6 to 1.45. Mm. So I'm not so much perturbed by what's happened. Okay. And we should not forget, I think India is a different phase. Mm -hmm. America went through a lot of inflationary, mm -hmm. you know, uh, inflationary pressures from 1975 to 1985. But the Nikkei was booming. Mm. So I see no reason that even if the Fed were to increase up, Interest rates, although I feel they will not increase, they are not increased aggressively. Mm -hmm. And there is no inflation in Europe. The biggest loose monetary policy in the world is Japan. We don't see any inflation. So the Fed may be right, the inflation may be all be transitory. Okay. So I don't see whether Fed is in trade rates or not. Mm -hmm. There could be some short term disruptions in the Indian market. Mm -hmm. But I believe this bull run is going to continue for a long, long, long time. Okay. Rakesh, good morning. You know, very interesting. And it's not an Alice in Wonderland market. <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead. No, it's not an Alice in Wonderland market. Mm. And this is not a Govinda movie, mm. as you were mentioning two days ago. Yeah. Okay, Rakesh, good morning. Uh, no, that was an anecdote, of I course. I think there are solid, there are solid, hear me out. Yeah. I think there are solid reasons for the bull run. Mm. And please don't compare this to a Govinda movie. Yeah. Uh, good morning. You know, we are in the business of uh, uh, media, so at times we use anecdotes, uh, Rakesh. But you know what? You, you use a very interesting phrase that, you know, the global markets had a bit of a heat and heat needed to be taken out. Uh, is there a bit of a heat in the small cap space, Rakesh? The small cap index is up 35% this year and the mid caps have also gone up a lot. Uh, do you think that needs a bit of a shake out? Yeah, I don't see all bull markets cannot be linear. There have to be corrections. And markets always have excesses. It's for us to judge where the excesses are and not go there. So maybe there is some heat even in the Indian markets, maybe in the mid cap or the small cap space. So that needed to be corrected, it will correct itself. That should not make me fearful of the market as a whole, is what I feel. Okay. Uh, Rakesh, hi, good morning. Uh, would you be worried about the recovery getting pushed back because of the impending third wave and the impact that that would have on the economy? Ma'am, you know that there is going to be a third wave and others know, I don't know. Nobody predicted the second wave, <laughs> right? And everybody is ready to predict the third wave. I think at the pace at which vaccinations are going and the rate at which we could get herd immunity, I see no reason there should be a third wave. And wave or no wave, the Indian economy is much better prepared to face any kind of crisis. And I for sure can bet my money there's going to be no third wave. <laughs> Nobody predicted the second wave. Now, all these smart people, all the social media is predicting a third wave and we are all getting fearful of that. We should man maintain all caution and take all care, but I don't think there's going to be a third wave. Even if it is, the market will take in its right. Mm. Because it is expected, market is discounting it and we are preparing for it. Mm. 
Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, these are mathematical models which are predicting and uh, we really do not know how the virus is going to behave and, uh, you know, But nobody predicted the second wave. Oh, yes, that is exactly why. No, but nobody predicted the second wave. I agree. You tell me one person who predicted the second wave. Now everybody is predicting a third wave. No, I'll tell you someone who Everybody predicted by... Everybody's a master epidemiologist. Well, Rakesh, in a lighter vein, Anuj had said it oh, one of those days. I'm really worried about the way we are all moving about, he said. And uh, it turned out... Anyway, that was in a lighter vein. My, my issue is not no, about but, waves. No, but you see, the market's always... No, no, Rakesh, no? Rakesh, this area is something we don't know. So let me move to, uh, you know, it, I guess medical experts who will be able to better tell us, epidemiologists or whoever. Uh, I don't want to talk about the wave so much as I want to talk about the other thing that you said. You know, we are in a long bull run. What are you basing that on? Is it uh, the way the commodity rally? Is it on the real way in which realty stocks are rising? What is your uh, uh, the basis on which you are optimistic about uh, both markets I am, and I am basing, uh, I am basing on the fact... I think because the economy of takeoff stays COVID or no COVID. See, we went through a cycle, NBA mm. cycle. We went through a lot of change. John Dunn, IBC, you know, RERA. Now we're having reform in labor laws, mining laws, farm laws. I think India is on the threshold of a long, long period of very good economic growth. The, the digitization in the Indian society surprises me. I have run such a large investment and trading portfolio just sitting at home. It was not possible if India was not digitized. We've had good monsoons. So I think that the structural change that has taken place in the economy is now coming, you know, is coming to the fore. So I don't think it's, you know, people are worried about the COVID, but they, they are missing the trees for the woods. Mm -hmm. The more thing is that the deep structural change, the corporate sector has revised. It's restructured. It has the lowest debt levels. I think we are sitting into what is going to be one of the highest capex cycles India has ever seen. We want to have higher saving rates. We have a government which is delivering social, you know, social welfare schemes very well. I think a delta of factors they are beyond the COVID. Our minds are, you know, filled, are, are, are prejudiced by this COVID. But I think there are deeper reasons why I'm bullish. Mm. And the market is reflecting it in its movement. People are saying demand accounts are open. There are bloody 4 crore demand accounts in India. There are 85 crore Indians. There are 80 crore accounts still to be open. <laughs> okay. The flow of money in the Indian market is unimaginable. Mm. We'll be sitting on $750 billion in savings. Mm. In a $2.5 trillion economy. Mm. Where mm. will those savings go? Mm. Mm. Okay, the second so thing is, mm. Indian GDP has now reached Indian per capita income. Mm has reached a state beyond $2,200, dollars where big discretionary spending kicks in. And all this spending is, according to me, go to education, health, and entertainment. And proteins. And better clothing. So I think there are much, much, much deeper reasons, in my opinion. And market is clearly recognizing that, while most people are worried about the COVID. And this press has played such a horrible role in magnifying this beyond all limits. No, it has prejudiced our minds. First of all, people were fearful. Now they're all prejudiced. So that's what I feel and I reserve the right to be wrong. Uh, no, no, I, I, think I take your point that we were all... The next five years. No, we were all paralyzed by the fear because it happened to near and dear ones. It happened around us. It happened to our families. So obviously, uh, the mind was numbed. I take your point that we may therefore be exaggerating the pessimism. Hold on to that thought, Rakesh. We have lots more questions for you. We are back in a jiffy. Welcome back to this special chat with Rakesh Jundrunwala. Rakesh, you know, uh, that is why I want to come back. You know, going by what you just said before the break, I want to come back to that 2004 question. You know, even in 2003, we were coming out of a long NPA cycle uh, and a long lean patch. So that's why I'm asking you, does it feel like the 2004-2008 period again? I have, I have a 2002-2003 feeling, and it's not going to last for six years. It's going to last for decades. Oh, I've got it. Okay. okay. So, uh, Rakesh, getting back to the first point that Lata was making, this market has also been, you know, a lot about uh, the global plays. You have yourself made a lot of money, I, I believe, in, you know, metal stocks over the last six months or so. Do you think that commodity super cycle is still intact uh, and is this still a good space to be in? 
Well, it has just started. I think we are a commodity super cycle for the next five, seven years. And, and you know, sir, because of environmental reasons, because of the surge in demand for infrastructure spending, there has been no investment in the metals. Is where you try to set up a greenfield steel plant in India, it'll take you seven years. So there has been no investment. Even at today's prices, the rate of return on capital is not exorbitant. And you know, this concern for the environment and China, which is the biggest exporter, is not going to export because the value added in the metal is very little for them. And forget the super cycle. If you base yourself on last quarter's prices, today's steel prices are 20 to 25 percent higher than the average realization of the last quarter. I mean, companies could see earnings of 200, 300 rupees per share. You know, cement stocks, good cement stocks are valued at 30 to 40 times earnings. Steel stocks are valued at 5 to 7 times earnings, and people are doubting it. Who's going to give the steel? I'm not talking of today's price, I'm talking of last quarter prices. And I want to make a disclosure, I'm an interested party, everything I say, please take with a pinch of salt. Everybody knows that cement stocks are going to prosper and steel prices are going to come down. And they're not going to last. Until there is doubt, the prices are just going to go up. I'm not bullish. I'm extremely, extremely, extremely bullish on metal stocks. Both from the point of earnings and both in the point of valuations. You make a, you make a killing when EPS multiplied by P, both go up. I think both is going to go up in the case of metal stocks. I think the valuation is a joke. And there's okay. nothing else but except doubt about their prices, about the, about the metal prices. And I don't know where the metal is going to come from. Okay, so extremely bullish on the metal space. Uh, we spoke about the commodities. Uh, any other big themes that excite you over the next one to two years, Rakesh? I mean, there's so much going on in, say, the digital space. There's so much in e-commerce. There were a lot of IPOs in tech. FinTech is doing well. Uh, what are the other big themes that you like? Well, I don't want to comment any themes. I think it's going to be a relay race. Don't try to time the market too much. Where you have good opportunity, good corporates, good governance, reasonable valuation, I think jump in and buy. Rakesh, what about the PSU space? Uh, uh, because, you know, I believe uh, that's one area which uh, has, you know, sort of interested you and uh, you you have participated in this PSU rally. Uh, do you think this time things are for real in terms of the kind of changes that we are seeing? And also which part of the PSU rally do you like? Do you like like the same? I think there's a long, long, I think there's a long. See, the key to the corporate sector valuation is the government policy. I mean, better corporate governance, better allocation of capital, I think if the government gets its act together right, I think PSU stocks can give you tremendous return. Okay, but uh, which part? I mean, would you like PSU banks, for instance? They are also coming out of a long hole uh, with all the NPAs now provided. Let's for not get into. Yeah, I have, I put, I have, I basically put my money in PSU banks in the PSU sector, but I think the entire sector can do very well. Okay. No, I mean, PSU and is I'm, large. I, it's okay. my judgment. I have no information. No, it's not my... I have no information, but it's my judgment that government is very serious about the disinvestment program. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, Although I'm, it's very difficult to get things out of the bureaucratic maze in India, mm. but government is determined. It is, I think, the prime minister is determined. Mm. Mm. No, no, fair enough. I was just trying to say that PSU that is such a, a large option. package. Uh, do you like the... The metals, the power companies, the uh, uh, the PSU banks. Which part of the PSU uh, attracts? But I you? like, I like uh, uh, Lata. I like everything, but I have limited capital. <laughs> okay. And I, I want like. to make concentrated bets. Okay. Fair enough. That's not helping much. But uh, let me come to uh, the mid caps itself. Uh, in the finance space, w would you venture now to the mid cap banks, both in private and in uh, the public sector. Let's I mean, SBI not, has let, run, see, so that's why I'm asking see, you whether you come not down. Talk about, uh, I'm not asking you individual names. Uh, I'm asking uh, you whether I'm you come. To. I'm extremely, I'm extremely bullish on the banks, and I'm extremely bullish on the so-called inefficient banks. Oh. Because I think the NPA cycle has turned the banks. The inefficient banks have got very high cost income ratios. The cost income ratios are going to go, 
come back, come down dramatically. I see growth. See what happens if there are thousand hotel rooms in Bombay, and only four hundred occupancy. The best survive, and the best make money. But if the demand is for eleven hundred rooms, everybody makes money. And I don't see if we have. I think we will have fourteen, fifteen percent nominal GDP growth this year. In that kind of growth, there is going to be demand for money. And I see not less than ten to fifty, twelve percent, fourteen percent nominal GDP growth in India for the next four, 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 five years and beyond that. So when demand for money comes, banks will get bargaining power. And in bargain and the and those banks who can garner deposits will get the bargaining power. So I am very bullish on the banking sector as a whole, and especially on the old inefficient banks, whether in the public sector or otherwise, because they have the cheapest valuation, then they are going to see the biggest upside in earnings. Okay, all right, that's on the Possibly. banks. But you know, I just wanted to come back to the point you were making earlier. Sure, uh, Rakesh, you were making a point earlier about how this feels like that whole 2002 to 2003 period for you, and you see this as a perhaps a decade-long bull run. In every bull run, there are corrections that come through, right? Uh, do you think we are ripe for a correction right now? And if yes, is it a prudent strategy to keep your powder dry and wait for that correction, or do you think that you know every dip should consistently be bought even now, and the correction may not be uh, that severe? So, Sony, I am not so smart that I can type the markets to excellence, right? Let's accept that. What I feel is we are going through a correction, but the correction is more sideways than downwards. You know, we are we are correcting turn wise. Sometimes banks correct, sometimes automobiles correct. So we are going through a correction, but the strength of the market is ensuring that the correction is sideways, not downside. And I don't see any deep correction at the moment, and I reserve the right to be wrong. Mm. Okay, <laughs> you're always saying that, Rakesh. Uh, you know, when you last spoke to Shireen, you had said that uh, you think that pharma companies are in for a double century, and they have scored only about 30 uh, 30 runs. Uh, this was about what a year ago when you spoke to her. What? How do you uh, judge pharma now? From 30, they have come to 40. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so I think uh, Lata, there is a long, 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 long way to go. See, India today, do you realize India makes 40 to 45 percent of all medicine consumed in America? Yes. We have a large home market. Our healthcare consumption is going to go through the roof mm -hmm. because our GDP is reaching that level where discretionary expenditure on health will increase dramatically, and that is also aided by the experience people have gone through COVID. India will become one of the pharma centers, is and will become. One of the biggest pharma centers of the world. Imagine we are forty-five percent of all American medicine is made in India today. Yep, you know. So there is a long way to go. Mm. I think it's it, it, it's in a it's in a secular bull run the Indian pharma industry, okay. uh, both export-wise, and it's not easy. Yeah. No, I was going to ask you that uh, while it is true that uh, many of the sectors are in this takeoff stage, as you put it, you know, metals and. Uh, uh, capital goods. Uh, the fact of the matter has also been that COVID and even before that GST, for instance, has hurt the informal sector a lot. We have seen MSMEs, SMEs and even shops, retail shops uh, being um, hurt, hurt. Even when they are opened up, many could remain shuttered because they, they were not able to survive about 18 months of no money. Uh, how will that reflect? I mean, would you not buy, say, mass consumption producing companies and rather buy value-added or uh, slightly uh, more expensive goods-making companies, uh, the consumption uh, trends, how would you delineate them? I think consumption in India will come through very strongly across all the sectors, all the ranges. And remember one thing in detail, where the shop is owned by the retailer, he will survive and prosper. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the retailer's overheads are very low. And they all have good savings. So although, you know, there is big talk of job... See, the, the aviation, hospitality sector and retail to some extent has been badly affected. And GST now is for three to four... has been here for, I think, three, four years. Mm. Whatever effects are, people have adjusted. And I cannot say that I will promote a... I must promote a small enterprises and regardless of whether they pay taxes or not. Mm. As a society, we all have to pay taxes. Mm. And if a sector was... Surviving by evasion of taxes, that had to end. Mm. Mm. 
And that's happened for, they, they have faced it for four years, everybody has adjusted. And Lata I can write out a stamp paper and give you mm. the corporate tax and the GST collections will surprise people this year. Mm. The corporate profits this year, according to me, are going to be between 5 and 6 percent of GDP as again 2 and a half percent last year. Government itself will be surprised at the quantum of tax collections. And all this effort where you are linking GST, income tax, digitizing thing is becoming very difficult. Yes. Mm. And not profitable to evade. Okay. So, ma'am, all this is going to come together. Sure. Uh, Rakesh, what yeah. about some of the traditional old economy businesses, like say real estate or automobile? Uh, do you think uh, they will also be part of this secular uptrend, or do you think there could be some underperformance in a couple of these sectors? Uh, ma'am, yeah. sir, real estate has gone nowhere in 15 years. Not 15, then maybe 13 years. If the economy booms, real estate has to participate in that. And automobile will participate. So, Anuj, every sector will do well. Mm -hmm. Don't be try to be so smart that I bought this now. I will sell this. This is not going to perform now. Then I will buy. I'll sell X, buy Y. Then Y will go up. Then I'll sell Y and then I'll buy X. I'm not so smart here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I advise others not to be so smart. <laughs> no. No, Rakesh, I, I, I remember, you know, uh, two weeks back when you called me and, uh, you, you know, you, you said that, you know, there's something that you want to advise me. Uh, and you gave me a uh, personal advice. Uh, what would be that advice for general retail audience listening to you right now? Well, see, the general realization is don't try to time markets. India is in a long, 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 long bull market, right? And put savings every month. And take the use of professional managers. It sounds very inglamorous and, you know, very lecture type, but that is the reality. And equity is going to give you a return between 15 and 21 percent. I think if I get 18 percent, I'm a king. If I get 21 percent, I'm an emperor. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, and if I get 24 percent, I'm like the king of England at the heydays of the British Empire. <laughs> So, I mean, I accept that. And please don't invest on hearsay. I know it sounds very boring, but that is what reality is. Don't invest in the US. Hearsay. Yes. When the food at home is so good, mm. why eat outside here? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, point taken, uh, Rakesh. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us and injecting some much needed optimism. Uh, into the investor community. There is a large audience that's watching you and I hope this in, uh, optimism is infectious. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Stay safe. I only want to say one thing. Thank you for inviting me. Believe in India. Invest my fellow Indians and prosper. Please believe we will make it one day. We will. Oh, of Rakesh, course. Rakesh, just, just it's one... It's my belief. Yeah, believe in India. Okay, there's just one viewer question. Let me just take uh, take that. Someone's asking you, do you have confidence in the ethanol story? Because in the past you had invested in some of these, uh, uh, the the new policy and all. Uh, are you investing? Ethanol story? What what? Ethanol, ethanol. In what? Ethanol. Uh, sugar, sugar, sugar byproduct. I used ethanol. to be an investor. Okay. I I no, I use I used to be an investor in an ethanol company, but I'm no longer an investor. No, no. Okay. okay. And you don't want to be? But it has done very well. Well, no comments. <laughs> All right. Okay, no forward-looking statements, is it? Thank you, Rakesh, for a very interesting chat. Uh, and uh, for the optimism that you exude, we hope that optimism is infectious. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Stay tuned. There's lots more lined up for you on CNBC TV 18.